The human body is a fascinating machine. Differing from person to person, it could be as fragile as ice and as resilient as tempered steel. We witness the limits to what the body can handle every day. Even my video on a man who suffered 83 days of radiation poisoning is a testament to how we are equipped to fight and survive. But what if five people were not looking out for your best interest, actively trying to take a life as it refuses to be snuffed out again and again? How much can one man handle against the forces of evil and greed? Today, we'll take a look at what I'm sure was an adventure into madness for these five individuals as they tried over and over again to take the life of Michael Malloy, also known as the man who couldn't die. Before the murder attempts, Michael Malloy was known for few things. He was a former firefighter living in New York. Born in 1879, Mike had been through some rough times that by his 30s landed him homelessness and alcoholism. He had few friends to look out for him, and when he met five acquaintances, he had even less good things going for him. See, Michael was worth about $3,500 in life insurance money if he died accidentally, equivalent to about $70,000 today. Doesn't seem like a crazy amount, but apparently it was enough for these men to get to work plotting Mike's demise over it. The five acquaintances were Tony Marino, Joseph Murphy, Francis Pasca, Hershey Green, and Daniel Crisberg, later titled by headlines as The Murder Trust. The plot was devious, but simple. Tony owned a local speakeasy, and Mike was an alcoholic. The five would invite him out every night and give him drinks on the house until he died leaving Las Vegas style. Thinking he'd hit the jackpot of cool buddies, Mike spent most of his waking life drinking for free. Day after day, Mike would roll up to the bar, drink for hours, and pass out without paying his tab. The plan was moving slow, and the bartender was starting to pay the price for their murderous scheme. They had to speed this up. The five discussed phase two, and soon the bartender started casually replacing Mike's gin with antifreeze. Still, Mike kept on drinking, supposedly because ethanol found in grain alcohol can be used to treat antifreeze poisoning, and so he was curing himself every drink. When that didn't work, the antifreeze was replaced with turpentine. When that didn't work, they mixed in horse laminate rat poison, and even wood alcohol, which is pure methanol. Just 4% of wood alcohol has been known to cause blindness, and it was the cause of many deaths in the 30s when it was mixed with impure alcohol. Michael didn't just get a mixture of wood alcohol, however. He was served straight-up shots of it and still kept on asking for more. The most hope the murder trust saw was Mike falling onto the floor unexpectedly, only to snore the rest of the night away. Now the five were starting to find all of this resilient behavior rather silly, so they decided that it was time to up the ante. Why don't we start serving old immortal Mike some rotten sardines and shrapnel mixed in with it? Maybe some oysters soaked in wood alcohol. Mike, iron stomach aside, take some pride in what you eat. Food and drinks weren't clearly the solution here, so the five plotted something more physical and way more obvious. At this point, taking out Mike was more of a pride thing than it was a sneaky ploy to get his money. One afternoon, after Mike had passed out at the bar, the five dragged him out into the winter cold and started to dump bottles of water over his chest and head, hoping to freeze the man to death. The next day, Mike rolled up in the bar, half-frozen, simply complaining that it was a wee bit chilly today. Guys, you can make money selling tickets to see old Mike survive everything you do to him. What are you doing? When that didn't work, they started getting desperate. Murder Trust member Hershey Green owned a taxi. By now, they figured, screw subtlety, this guy has to die. 
They all piled into Green's cab with a passed out Mike at their feet and drove them a few blocks away. There, they dragged the alcoholic from the cab and dropped him in the streets before proceeding to run him over at 45 miles per hour. The trust fled the scene of the accident, thinking they had finally succeeded, but no. Mike landed in the hospital with broken bones for three weeks before he was right as rain. The crazy immortal bastard rolled right back up into the speakeasy, hardly recalling what had happened that night, and asked for another drink, as if he was hilariously rubbing it in their faces that they simply couldn't kill him. Unfortunately, all that luck and resilience couldn't last forever. The murder trust convened only one more time and came up with a final plan that was so incriminating and lacking in all sneakiness. On February 23rd, 1933, after Mike had passed out, they dragged him to one of their rooms and fixed a hose from his mouth to a coal gas jet. This was what finally killed Mike. Within an hour, he asphyxiated, and his death was ruled as lobar pneumonia. He was quickly buried, and the murder trust got everything they ever hoped to achieve. Just kidding. Of course, they were tracked down and put on trial. When police found out that local celebrity Mike the Undying had mysteriously died, they were all over the case. The five, as well as a doctor accomplice who had helped with the failed cover-up, were convicted. Hershey Green was sent to prison, while the others were executed via electric chair. I bet they all wish they were as durable as old Mike Malloy. Thanks for watching. For more true crime and horror, please consider subscribing. You can game with me on Twitch every Saturday, follow me on Twitter to find out what I'm up to, which by the way I know I'm not posting as often as I used to. My full-time job is becoming kind of an issue with me writing my scripts. But rest assured, if you want to hang out with me, I'm always there on Saturday on Twitch, and I'll come up with these videos just as soon as I can. Please. Be well.